Hey, Christian, I wonder whether you and your church have consistent opportunities for hearing conversational evangelism with the lost in your community. If not, how will you ever normalize personal witness? <laughs> Intrigued? Well, stick around, because over these next several episodes of the podcast, I'm giving you a glimpse of several sessions being taught on site at our exclusive Equipping Evangelists Conference next month, including this one, Extreme Go Teams, Gospel Groundswell for Maximum Impact. This is the Equipping Evangelist, a podcast that equips your entire church for evangelism together. My name's Corey McKenna, and after years as a pastor and evangelist in the local church, I founded an equipping ministry called The Cross Current, and now this podcast, all to share my experience and expertise with you. Well, again, the Equipping Evangelists Conference facilitates an exclusive in-person opportunity for like-minded church leaders and members to both explore and experience the impact of equipping evangelism together. Now, way back in 2012, the Cross Current hosted here in London, Ontario, our very first conference dedicated to equipping evangelists. Well, with the need for local missions now mushrooming, the Lord has really led us to relaunch this training, only this time in Toronto. Okay, and in our sixth session, we learned this, how, how equipping by example, for the outgoing ministry of an extremely faithful few causes ongoing gospel multiplication through the masses in your church. Now, it yet again needs to be said that this Equipping Evangelist Conference and, and our Equipping Evangelist Coaching is not about pragmatics, okay? It's about principles, and these principles are applicable to all Christians and all churches for multiplying gospel ministry together long term. Okay, and here's the equipping principle that conference participants need to catch in this session six called Extreme Go Teams. Here it is. Normalizing personal witness necessitates our saints having consistent opportunities for hearing conversational evangelism with the lost in your community. Let me say that again. Normalizing personal witness necessitates our saints having consistent opportunities for hearing conversational evangelism with the lost in your community. Now, someone listening somehow just heard what I didn't say. Now, preachers don't like when congregants do this, right? Okay. But I just know that, that someone thought they heard me say, you need to do street evangelism. Okay. Rewind it back. I didn't say that. But but to try and help, uh, help you very practically picture how the Lord does use powerfully very small groups of what we call extreme gospel outreach teams or extreme go teams. And the Lord uses these to bring huge impact to entire churches. Let me share with you an illustration that I call the gospel ground swell, the gospel ground swell. Now, it is a little known fact that in science, a groundswell is a swell or rolling of the sea, and it's really due to a distant storm offshore. Now, I know a few surfers, okay, I'm, I'm from the East Coast, and surfers tell me that the further and the stronger the storm, hear this, the greater the impact when the waves hit the shoreline. Now, that just makes sense, and I'm sure you got the picture. Well, in the context of church wide gospel witness, because that's what we're going after on this podcast, our entire church equipped for evangelism together. Here's the principle of the gospel groundswell, okay? So though an extreme gospel outreach team, like street evangelists, this will only likely be about 1%, maybe even less, 
of your entire church, okay? A very small group of extremely faithful ones. Hear this. The further that this very small group consistently goes, goes into the distance, goes into the culture, okay? The further they go and the stronger the storm they create for Christ through faithful gospel conversations, the greater and wider and, and more enduring the gospel ground swell of ministry when the waves of witness hit the shoreline of your church, okay? And and not just for those faithful few way out in the field. I'm talking for the many ministering at home base as well. So I, I want you to picture that. A small group goes, they go far, they, 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 they're faithful when they go, okay? They're submitted to, to local church leadership, get all that. But as they are faithful going the distance, the many ministering at home base in personal evangelism massively benefit as well. Now, this is a hugely important question, okay? Does this storm, okay, have to be created by extreme go teams specifically of street evangelists? I mean, you might be listening right now going, I'm not in a major urban center. I'm in a rural setting. The answer is no. The answer is no. This could be uh, regular ministry to a Christian soup kitchen, to a, a youth drop-in center. This could be a men's mission. This could be a senior's home or, or any any other number of, of, of ministry centers, okay? But hear this. But the heart of the principle is this. It has been my, my repeated experience as an equipping evangelist that churches who don't have any sort of regular, ideally weekly evangelism team in their community, they do not see the the steady, the sustained gospel momentum, that groundswell in their church. Just doesn't happen. Okay, I mean, if I was to ask you how we weekly pray, how we weekly worship together, how we weekly fellowship, how we weekly discipleship, you would have an answer. But when it comes to weekly evangelism, there's very rarely an answer. Now, to illustrate the importance of this, I, I want to compare you starting uh, an equipping evangelism ministry at your church to starting a driving school right? Like cargo beep beep type driving school. We know there needs to be a classroom component to that. You need to study the manual. In the illustration, that's the scriptures. This is our playbook. This is where we get our cues for conversational evangelism. But how robust would that driving school be without a field component, right? You don't just learn to drive a vehicle in the classroom. You got to go to the field. Well, it is the same in equipping evangelism. Okay, we have to have both the classroom instruction, very important, but also the field component. That is what Extreme Go teams can bring to you and your church. Now, here at the Equipping Evangelist and, and the Cross Current and Equipping Evangelist coaching and conferences and all these things, we always want to be biblical. So we have to humbly ask the question, I mean, where do we see this principle of this gospel groundswell and normalizing the gospel played out in scripture? Okay, I've got an answer for that. Jot this down. Ready for it? The book of Acts. <laughs> the book of Acts. Of Acts. Okay, now I want to cite one specific example, one of my very favorite passages of Scripture, uh, where God gives us this beautiful picture of his early church on mission together. Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 37. Okay, it says this. Now, the full number of those who believed, right? They were all in, no, no bench warmers. They were of one heart and soul. One heart and soul means that all believers were all in with their entire being. They were unified in the gospel. No one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. I mean, the Holy Spirit supernaturally filled their hearts with grace, with generosity, and they had everything in common. I mean, everything means everything because they were extreme in their devotion of Jesus Christ and their focus on the mission. Look what it says. And with great power, with great Holy Spirit power. Here it is. The apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. That's the gospel, right? Look what it says. And great grace was upon them all. Please hear this. Because the gospel was frequently, and you might say fervently, being preached by a faithful few in public, God's great grace rested on the entire 
church. And so the outcome, there was not a needy person among them for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. What? Well, why? Because with the gospel faithfully and frequently being preached, God's great grace touched every human heart. And now, now this entire church, they were transformed people living transformed lives by the power of the Holy Spirit together. And folks, that is what we call extreme go teams, gospel ground swell for maximum impact, which is the title for conference session number six. Because in closing, here again is the equipping principle that conference conference participants will need to catch. Here it is. Normalizing personal witness necessitates our saints having consistent opportunities for hearing conversational evangelism with the lost in your community. Now, it's a bit bittersweet to tell you that the Equipping Evangelists Conference next month is officially full, okay? While I'm excited about that, I'm not excited to say we can't take any more participants this time around, but but I still encourage you <laughs> to watch the promo video, to receive venue details, and to contact us about future conferences, about equipping evangelist coaching, or about ministry with the cross current. And to do all of that, you can go to equipping evangelists with an S.org slash contact slash contact. Okay. Do you have any questions I could help you answer specifically about equipping evangelism, about extreme go teams, or about the Equipping Evangelist Conference or coaching or anything of the above? I hope so. To submit those, go to theequippingevangelist.com, click on that Got Questions, Get Answers button. I will receive those personally. And will you please also both subscribe to and share this podcast with others. Click the subscribe button below to listen every week to get your entire church equipped for evangelism together. And then please share this podcast with all of your Christian contacts to multiply gospel ministry in and through the local church. And I say it once again from my heart to yours. May God bless you. May his great grace rest on you and your church as you get equipped for evangelism together.